All right, so I got the engine on here. Um, there's not a lot of instructions on, <laughs> at least from Sling, as far as once the engine's on, it's just sort of like, okay, you got it on, all right, wire it up, make it look pretty. So um, there's, this is the part that attaches to the firewall here. Um, and there's some rib nuts that were put on and I'll uh, put the, that step up in the uh, screen here. And then we've got um, some of these here, which will go to the uh, engine control unit, which goes behind the firewall. And uh, then this attachment here, which I believe goes up to the top there. And then also over here, these are for the air duct that, uh, or the, the air filter, which goes part of the firewall, which is also part of this here. So these holes right there are for where these pieces go in there. So some wiring that needs to happen uh, across the top here. This is not torqued down yet. Um, and then if we come around to the other side, um, there's another set of wires here, and apparently all of this needs to get wired through this hole here. So that's how that needs to go. So um, there's some other parts here this needs to get attached underneath, and um, then there's uh, uh, some other parts that I believe these parts here go underneath as well. So that's uh, where we're at with here. Uh, still nothing back on this side, just so that I've got a little more access. All right, so now that I've covered some of the uh, video that I shot on my iPhone there, uh, which I did uh, before I got to this point, but uh, working on getting the wiring going in um, is definitely gonna be a, a learning process. Uh, I think the wiring is probably the, the part that's least documented. Um, some of the uh, things uh, are better situated. So uh, to, in order to get the bolt on in the lower left-hand corner from the front or the lower right-hand corner from the rear, um, you definitely need to have some unique tools. And that wrench there uh, is the only way that I can figure out how to get it over the, the, the bolt in the very back of it um, and then to be able to apply the torque. So I've got three of the four uh, mounting points torqued at this point in time, and I just need to get that finished up. Um, the wiring or routing was a little bit weird when the, the engine came out of the, the box. And, uh, fortunately some of the things that I have to do, uh, like the, the turbo inlet there, uh, that, that particular hose actually needs to be taken off and shrunk down a bit. Um, there's a diagram in the, the documents on how to do that. I just haven't gotten to that part yet. So um, at this point in time, I'm just working on getting some of the wiring going. Um, I, as much as I try, uh, it's put something together, see if it fits, put the next thing together, see if it fits, and then work backwards. Sometimes you got to take it apart. Uh, I'm working on getting the uh, push rods in place for the nose steering uh, wheel here. This is actually kind of hard. I mean, there's a couple hundred pounds hanging off the front of it. The nose wheel doesn't, doesn't turn very easily. Um, and uh, it's got to, you know, get put in between that and the, the pedals. So that was uh, the first time I'd encountered that. All the other push rods up until this point in time were easy peasy in and out. Um, so and things are starting to connect. Um, so you saw I get in the airplane there. That's actually starting to get to be more and more common uh, just simply because it's easier to work inside the airplane on some of this stuff than um, on the outside. I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm trying not to get in there too much, but... Uh, um, I think as I move further along with the instrumentation that that's going to become a normal thing. Um, so from here, uh, I've, got this, I've got a little longer section of the video here on putting this together. Um, this is the throttle quadrant, or I'm sorry, not the throttle quadrant, but the fuel selector uh, mechanism there. And that, that picture is there is basically what I'm basing it off of. Um, gentleman in Germany, uh, as far as I know, was the first one to do this. Um, the concept on it is, is to keep the fuel lines low to prevent, um, some vapor lock. Uh, when I was talking to Evan about it a little bit, um, he mentioned that that was the reason why, um, Evan's got some good theories on how to resolve that, but it's uh, probably going to be a little bit more work than I'm willing to put in on this. And 
I'm, I'm just basically following along uh, with what was done in Germany and it's well documented. So if you visit his website, um, he's got a lot of great pictures on it. Um, the problem I'm running into here is that the, um, the, the, the bolts that I need or the, the, the valves I need for the and air um, are horribly back ordered. Um, I emailed them this week and uh, they are quoting 20 weeks for the 90 degree valves um, and I need three of them. Oh, th this is the, the pattern or the, the fuel flow pattern that uh, basically this is all replicating. So rather than using the rubber hoses, it uses the, um, the, the, the I'm using the aluminum lines in this particular case. Um, for those watching, um, I strongly recommend using Teflon over this. Don't bother with the aluminum lines. I'd already invested in all the tools and, and parts and everything like that to do this with aluminum before I started looking at the Teflon. Teflon is going to be way easier. Um, it's going to, the cost is probably going to be a little bit more, but from a time perspective, it's going to be a whole lot easier. Um, so a lot of this is basically just uh, you know figuring out which is the next section that I got to uh, uh, make some connections for, and then put the the caps on. Um, the, the turns were kind of tight, so it makes it difficult to get the flange in there. Um, so I kind of moved it around to be able to expand that out. Um, I needed to get the, the control sticks out of the way uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, just being in and out, uh, they're kind of in the way now. They're going to have to get cut at some point in time coming up here. Um, and then I also wanted to get the seat backs painted. And the I figured I'd, well, I'd just take the sticks in at the same time and have them painted because there's a gap between when the, the boot and the control stick are at. And uh, just have easier to have them all done at the same time. Uh, same guy that did the painting for the inside of the canopy uh, I took that in and had him do that as well. Um, so the, the interior of the paint canopy and the seat backs and the stick all match. Um, so not much left to do with the side skins on the inside. So I uh, went ahead and put those in. Um, it, I thought it was interesting where the seat belt actually attaches there, uh, the lower portion of it. Um, the bolt isn't readily as exposed as I expected it to be. Um, so that needed to be in place well before... Um, I put the side skins on. Um, the other interesting part was is that I had missed a part earlier. Uh, my father-in-law cleaned it before we got it marked and where I knew where it went, and so I couldn't figure out where it went. And then I discovered that I was lacking a, uh, a mount point on the uh, side skins, and it's like, oh well, that's that's where that part goes because it had been floating around the shop for a while, and so I got that put in. Um, and then uh, this part here, uh, I. I know that they've got some rib nuts, or Evan has some suggestion to use rib nuts on that seam between the f rear portion of the uh, side skin and the front portion. Um, I'm still not quite sure how the uh, interior attaches, and um, uh, so I just I, I got a little ahead of myself and I riveted it all together, and then I realized it. But I'm just going to go with it for it is now. Um, another thing that I had sitting on the bench was the uh, the tray for the avionics. Uh, sitting there and I, I was getting tired of uh, it kind of being the way. Uh, at this stage of the game I'm not getting any more new things to install out. Uh, it's okay what's on the bench is going to get installed because it's all the engine uh, parts at this point in time and uh, I had the avionics uh, tray out. So I got that out and started kind of fiddling with it and uh, seeing how that went. Um, uh, Midwest did actually move their instructions out to a Dropbox, uh, which helped me greatly because uh, up until this point in time, they had everything up on Facebook and I'm not on Facebook anymore. So um, that helped out uh, to be able to get through that. Um, and then I started working on the side skins here. Um, you got to have both the seat belts pretty much all the, all the way together before you uh, uh, complete that. Um, still debating on whether I want to put that back panel in the... Um, the rear seat section um, so that's kind of just sitting there waiting to go in um, I probably ought to get that taken care of just simply because uh, it's it, it helps protect it anyway um, so hopefully uh, I'll have a little bit more here I've got another video that'll come out in about a week and um, you know I'm just working away thanks very much bye